Greetings, Joe here. Uh, happy to see you. And um, I was noticing that it's January 6th today, and it's the third anniversary of the insurrection in Washington, D.C. that is on its way to the Supreme Court for disqualification of Trump as a candidate. DJG. Um, that's a, a mode of referring to that person in a using initials um, is the convention that hasn't been picked up with him, but it's a way of referring to him without promoting him. Um, what I also noticed is that January 6th is in many religious calendars, the epiphany. And um, what's an epiphany? An epiphany is a kind of a flash of insight, like Eureka, I see. Um, epiphany in the dictionary is also points to manifestation, visible evidence. And, um, and it's kind of funny in how me communicating with this screen recording, it's a mode of communication that includes the face and the voice. So it's of a different flavor than words on the page. And being spoken word reminds me that in the flow of conversation, I may make errors and exaggerations or biases that may be in need of correction, that the written word in draft mode correction would receive. So I'd like to ask for a bit of latitude, wiggle room in this mode of communication. Gee, uh, the camera is a bit high up there. Uh, I, I'll give thought to eye contact view, but I kind of talk to the screen mostly. And I'm hypothesizing that there's somebody out there who can hear this. That's why I'm recording it as a way to be more than just me, to be a we, because communication is between person. So, howdy, person. Ah. Um, so, what do you say? I'm Canadian, just Joe Van. I'm a person in a place. Joe Van, Vancouver, the West Coast of Canada. And uh, so it's kind of modest, but kind of honest. And I'm an earthling spinning around the planet, breathing air, all this stuff that we do together without a thought. I noticed the air, the breeze, the atmosphere. Uh, you may have noticed I'm in a wheelchair and uh, that's another part of what I need to speak about. You see, I have disabilities, plural, not just that I'm not able to walk, 
Uh, I've got other conditions as well. Uh, I've got neuropathy in the hands. That means nerve damage. My hands are pins and ne needle kind of all the time. And uh, my typing speed is shot. And so if I am to communicate, I've got either master dictation software or master this using the spoken word and the image. So this anniversary of the insurrection and the disqualification of a person from any author, any author. Some things are a bit big for trying to rattle off on the tongue with a few cliches or something. These are people's lives. The reliability of a trust. What's trust? being able to depend upon one another because each of us needs to, well, we do need to take care of ourselves each um, in exercising self-reliance as much as possible in many different areas. But we can't cover all the bases. Each of us lacks skills or abilities or interest and have to call upon others to assist them in areas outside their range. It's the step from me to we and to be a we we need to be able to communicate. And that's a two-way street too. Um, golly. There will probably come to be a memorial day of reflection in which Americans at least, and maybe more, would remember the January 6th insurrection as an attack on the voice of we the people. And a person who attacked we the people cannot represent the other people. Um, gee, and then adding in epiphany and manifest, evident, all as a part of a cluster of ideas around a mark on the calendar. Wow. So this day is going to be historically marked as both a trial and a gift, maybe. Um, gosh, I gotta hit pause every once in a while just collect my thought. Sorry, you're back.
Uh, I mentioned the neuropathy um, as uh, another disability, um, kind of as a way to explain the beard. Um, it's an, it's not trimmed or uh, polished like David Letterman's or some other. Um, the neuropathy cuts off a lot of my dexterity. And the job of shaving requires dexterity. So I've had substantial neuropathy for more than a four, three, four years. And so this is just natural growth. And um, part of it, it's kind of in, in learning to roll with difficult circumstances, I look for a benefit. And when I see here is a reminder of Socrates, one of the foundational figures in philosophy. And um, I mentioned that recently in the world out there and uh, one of the responses was, oh, must think a lot of himself, a streak of arrogance. Not at all. It's actually an indication of modesty, an expression of, I know very little. But I can ask questions. And sometimes I can find out. In other words, along with a few disabilities, I've got a few abilities as well. And this tool here, it isn't just an on-ramp to global communication. It's a craft and an art and uh, an invitation. And so, Um, in, in trying to use these tools, I'm picking up some gifts and I thank you. Um, talking to Americans, that was a, a comic bit by Rick Mercer. They're quite funny, they're online. Um, and first, I want to say uh, I'm sorry that you've been having, having some trouble and hope that you get to the other side of them where stability, reliability, competence can all be better exercise, more perfect. Uh, and I'm so far from perfect, it's ridiculous, but uh, I can talk. Um, I lean into science and rationality and the examination of evidence. And um, I had previously been thinking to here in the time of post-COVID, we've just come out of a global pandemic. And I have thought that America's experience with it was particularly horrific, given DJT's multifaceted incompetencies. But I actually looked at the death rate and for quite a number of countries, expecting that the American death rate due to incompetence in coping with the infection would be in evidence. But no, I didn't find that. I found actually 
the Canada's death rate was just a smidge worse than the American. Um, we both scored about 1% death rate after infection. Um, among the worst were Peru and some other countries. Their death rates were over 4%. And then there were other countries like South Korea and maybe Singapore, where the death rate was on the par with one-tenth of one percent. In other words, some scored amazingly well in competency in coping with infection. Um, so I had been thinking to offer a condolence to Americans for over a million dead. That was staggering. And condolences are still due simply on that score. But so far as uh, competency with coping with infection, you're not that bad. And so I can step back from a presumption of criticism and say, I was wrong. So the capacity to admit error is prerequisite to correction. You can't get better until you can fix problems. Anyways, um, it's a pleasure to share a continent, a planet, an atmosphere with you. <laughs> um, and um, uh, Gosh, one of the things that sparked this piece of communication is that my wheelchair is um, continually running out of power and my range is, it used to be I could go 10 kilometers. Currently, I can't, on a good day, I could go four, but currently, um, I'll be running out of power to make it back and forth from the kitchen to the living room by tonight. In other words, I gotta consider changing from an electric wheelchair to a manual wheelchair just to get around home. And even though the manual wheelchair for me is particularly difficult, so the chair is going in for repair on Wednesday and it's gonna be the fourth or fifth repair since I've had the chair for about 10 months. In other words, this wheelchair has been problematic, short range since day one. And the manual says that it should be able to make 15 miles a day, which is over 20 kilometers, closer to 25, 24 point something. And that means there and back again could be over 10 kilometers. But this chair has never come close to that. In other words, it's failed its specs from day one. And the people who have been unable to solve the technical problem seem to be of the opinion that it's my fault, that I'm not using it right or charging it right or whatever. In other words, shrugging off the problem and uh, not solving it. 
So it's going to go back to the shop again. And I'm going to, I'm thinking to let them know that if the chair doesn't work, it doesn't work. And that if you can't solve it, send it back and have them solve it. And I could mention names and companies and maybe raise a fuss. Raising a fuss is more than sitting in negligence helplessly. Another part of communication. Um, communication course. That's what I'm kind of thinking of. Maybe calling this exercise because communication is the place in which me becomes, whoops, me becomes we from an M to a W. First person singular and first person plural. So that gives the listener the option of seeing, sharing, for uh, appreciation and maybe connection, or it could be so different that I am a specimen of otherness to be maybe examined or disposed of now, the way that some folks are. The communication. So I require technical support which is currently not scoring very high. And um, considering alternatives. Uh, the thing is that I need my wheels to take care of myself, get groceries, run chores, be out in the world. I, among other things, I'm a photographer. I look for beauty. I find it refreshing. Ah. And um, so if I can't get out, I can't get my grocery. In other words, I can't take care of myself. And I get emotionally involved in my own life. Uh, I can raise my necessity level and my alarm level to a degree that might be heard. And a measure of being heard is having things solved. And So this piece of communication will also go that way. And um, maybe some of those conversations may be recorded as well. Uh, Gee, happy New Year. Happy 2-4. Uh, one of the definitions of 2-4 in Canada is a 24 pack of beer, a double case. And um, I never would buy 2-4s because that was more than I could ever carry. Um, Happy 2-4 is also a reminder of each day is 24 hours. So happy today. And two four is not watching it. January 6th, 
2024 a moment. If we live with this on the now, continually moving between the past and the future. I guess that's an indication that I do take the philosophical point of view of standing back to look at the survey, the horizon. Um, and uh, uh, I guess a part of the appreciation for the day may come to include an assessment for how close of a call that happened three years ago. How many of us were on the precipice of losing so much. For what? A mobster who raised a lynch mob to lynch with the people. So I have enough groceries in the fridge and freezer to eat for a week, uh, but not much more than that. Um, and I might be running out of TP and some other things in the next while. Life has detail, and not all of them are pretty, but uh, they need to be tended to as a part of life. Um, and being disabled, I try to do as much as I can for myself, but every once in a while I have to ask for, ask for help. And asking for help, again, is a part of life. We do it every day, although we prefer to do it as little as we may be able to be and a tad diffuse and rambly. Sorry, what brings things to a well, there it is. The first stall out of the day. And it's oh. coming up on three o'clock in the afternoon. First of all, uh, that's the thing, is that I got seven bars on the power display on Reboot, but it'll evaporate to nothing, going to the kitchen about. And uh, for the last week or so, I've been noticing the range progressively getting smaller and smaller. That's why it needs to be repaired. So they're gonna pick it up on Wednesday and um, hopefully solve something. It actually will likely turn into a fresh set of batteries at about $800 under warranty. In other words, that's not out of my pocket, but it's still an incredible expense. And yet the batteries, that'll be the fifth set of batteries for this machine. The original ones came in the shop. They've been replaced three times. So 
five sets of batteries in 10 months indicates a substantial bug of some sort, but they haven't solved that. So I'm going to tell them that if they can't solve it, a fresh batch of batteries for two months is not a solution. They work for two months and then they're gone because there's a bug in the device. And that's not an adequate solution. So I'm going to suggest that my old pair, chair that I used for eight years got me around all over the place. No problem. Or minimal problem. But uh, I'm going to ask for them to revive my old chair rather than and send this chair back to the supplier to find the bug. What's the problem? Okay. Uh, shifting this conversational exercise to another note is I'm going to put this up on YouTube and people can share it and comment on it. And uh, there may be some perceptions and effects coming out of that that are worth pursuing or necessary. So communication matter. Can we talk? That's a great line. Can we talk? And it was almost a signature phrase for a comedian named Joan Rivers. And um, she had a mouth on her. She could talk, uh, and often it was funny. In other words, being amusing, effervescent, hilarious, um, can add uh, a sauce to a load of ideas that makes it more palatable and easier to digest. So comedy, is a necessary part of communication sometimes. And uh, uh, <clears throat> there was a piece on Netflix last year. They're opening up a Hall of Fame for comedian. And uh, there were four in the first um, the first handful of elevation. And um, they were George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, and Joan River. And I'm acquainted with all of them. And um, I had expected that the person presenting the Joan Rivers appreciation would have been Kathy Griffin, but it was Chelsea Handler. And I'm not dishing Chelsea, she's a sweetheart, but Joan and Kathy were tight buddies for years. And Kathy's exclusion to me is another piece of evidence of uh, DJT's pathological effect in culture. Uh, 
Well, and this opens up a huge load of things. What's funny, why well, do you remember? Um, and gosh, well, the thing is, is I, Kathy's on tour. She's going to be in Vancouver next month. And uh, uh, I'd like to see her do a set on appreciating Joan and women in comedy and how freedom of expression is often limited, shut down. She's been truly subverted for years over a joke. And it was her response to Trump's I had to wrap it in words. It, it, I think it was in <clears throat> one of the presidential debates was moderated by a woman. Um, and Trump, in his dog whistle way, was disparaging how bloody women are. He was going on about blood leaking out of them from many different places in a disparaging and contemptuous manner. manner. And Kathy merely pointed out that Trump was pretty bloody too. And she was canceled. <sighs> Being in the post New York thing, post New Year thing, um, of course, Kathy and gosh, the older noggin is less ready with names. Um, Anderson Cooper. Yeah. Uh, the Vanderbilt kid used to do New Year's together at Times Square, tossing jokes back and forth. This year, Anderson Cooper did it with Cohen, Andy Cohen, both of whom were tight friends for years with Kathy Griffin, both of whom dropped her. And that the New Year's thing, what I could see is a couple of alleged friends who failed. Failed the friendship test. Can you stand by a friend who's going through difficulty? Apparently not. I hope they're better friends than not. Anyway, so Kathy's coming to town. <clears throat> I actually live across the street from the Women's Memorial. It's a memorial to women who have lost their lives to Fritz. Males dominating to the point of destroying. 14 women got into engineering school. A guy who wanted to be an engineer took this as a threat, as a subversion of his ability to live. And he went into 
an engineering school and killed 14 women. That's only the start of a long list of horrors. Because thousands of other circumstances end up with women being dead. And this concerns all of us. Uh, other significant stories around the Women's Memorial is the Highway of Cheers, where many Native women have disappeared. The mission, many never found. It also refers to the pig farmer slaughter. Story most thanks over right no Oretha. But it also refers to the Latin American femicide from the Rio Grande South. Many women are being killed and they're being noticed here because of this memorial. And currently the women in Iran are standing up for their right to dress as they choose rather than be threatened by mullahs. In other words, the memorial contained more than females aspiring to engineering. My mom worked for engineer and she was more than a secretary. She was an administrative assistant and a buyer for a factory. How do you equip a factory? How much equipment do you need and how much does it cost? Um, and she loved guys who could be effective. Women can be effective too. Anyway, so there's this memorial in Vancouver, and I'd like to suggest that Kathy Griffin do a gig there, communicating about Joan, about women, about comedy, and about DJT as much as she wants. And she might be heard. Hearing matters. Um, so I talk about a lot of things, government, disability, the court, the constitution, the American and Canadian constitutions are different, and that's fine. But I find that we stand on a foundation of respecting the citizen that goes all the way back to Rome and before that, Greece. And when it comes to the line, can we talk? H.O. For me, were I to have a question or a, <clears throat> a tagline like Joan did, mine would go, where's the pollock? To whom am I speaking? And can we be a we? And that's an exercise. It's not theory. You find out in the world together, communicating.
sound change stuff around. And maybe once in a while being funny. Doesn't mean seriousness is avoided. There's a lot of things that are very curious. But sometimes levity is the lubricant for accepting the past and moving into the future. It's a necessary tool. Um, by way of getting acquainted, I'm, uh, I've been watching YouTube. Gee, YouTube is nearly two decades old. And I've been remiss in not learning how to do that, use this tool. Because communication is so central to so many things. So, a few of the things that I follow on YouTube are kind of like tiny homes and homesteading and water reclamation and gardening, planting. I've, I've been a gardener myself. And uh, water harvesting in many areas it's fascinating how people learn to retain the rain and store things in the water table and how much fecundity, fertility comes out of those strategies. There's a great deal of inspiration available through these tools. And I'd like to contribute a bit to inspiring. Um, okay, so there's a handful of thoughts and areas in which I spend time and attention. Thousands of other things as well. Books. Uh, I, <clears throat> Arts and Letters Daily opens a river of intelligent articles. Uh, gee, there's an expression of bias. I prefer to avoid stupidity and cultivate intelligence. And That means for a gardener doing some weeding, weeding and doing some cultivation. What do you want less of? What do you want more of? It takes a bit of work and it takes moderating the attention. What am I spending time looking at? And hopefully the time that I use can be an investment in Assets and valuable. Ah, valuable. As a disabled person, I, I really, um, I find that word is, it's the current form of referring to folks who need tools or need help to function. And uh, that's not, point of shame or pride is just a fact of life. Uh, there's lots of things I can't do and I need to be able to ask for help and without shame. It's just, just needs dealing with. And uh, I've been exploratory in life and um, 
some of the places I've explored are of bad repute. And it could be shameful to mention them, but I may have learned something there of value. And uh, so on that note, One of the people that I follow semi-often um, is a guy named A. A. Ron, and he is a critic of Scientology, and that organization was a part of my acquaintance in early adulthood, and uh, it was a kind of a disaster in my life. But uh, if I'm going to be pursuing this, I have to include it among the many topics I'll cover. But I'm not going to mention it as my sole topic or prime, even primary topic because of its shameful irrationality. And it may actually be useful in that there's something about DJT nobody seems to mention that's glaringly obvious to me. It's how much like L. Ron Hubbard he is and it's hilarious. And so I think I'm going to indulge in a bit of humorous criticism of DJ2 and his cult member because I'm acquainted with cult member. In other words, Giving a nod to A. A. Ron and his work is inspiring me to pick up this work. Because some things must be criticized. One of my aphorisms, I've got quite a few, you'll get acquainted over the while. Uh, the aphorism is criticism is critical. And that means both criticism is vitally necessary and that criticism stings. It hurts. People don't want to admit they've made an error. That means they've got to go back through all their presumptions, assumptions, and projections and do some debugging on their critical faculty. You're not able to measure evidence or discord with civility. A lot in play. Um, so A.A. Ron is consistently attacking the Church of Scientology as a human trafficking mobster cult pretending to be a religion. And his case has merit. Um, It may be that, well, my way of talking about them and the amount of talking about them that I'm willing to do are different than his. I, I so disrespect that organization that 
to even call them Scientology is ridiculous because where does the word come from? Science? The growth of knowledge based on the examination of evidence and the proposal of hypotheses for testing and confirmation from others. Do you see what I see? So science and ology is <clears throat> of the logos, of, of a love of study of that subject of science. And so because the organization refuses critical reflection, refuses communication, and just spouts whatever they want. They're not worthy of the name Scientology. And actually the term was coined not by L. Ron Hubbard, but by somebody maybe a decade before with the intended meaning of susceptibility to bullshit on the subversion of science by people who want to have what they want to have rather than examining evidence and being subject to critical correction and admission of error. But anyways, I don't I don't like how they use the label. Scientology, because they don't know what they're talking about. Um, and <clears throat> to be a little bit critical, I've got a couple of name options to consider. One is Cylons. Cylons is in a much used science fiction trope for alien. And um, I would spell the term with dollar sign, cent sign, I L O N S, the Cylons. And um, it might be construed as moderately insulting or critical or rude. But it also <clears throat> sounds quite close to silent, as in prohibiting speech, which is something that they do a lot. And um, they're not the only one who refuse to talk. So one of the stories I'm going to get around to telling is Joe and the Cylons. Uh, it might be funny. Some of it's bad. Um, but I won't let them own me. I won't let them be the focus of all my discussion. They are a part of my experience. Not and um, they require more criticism than I've given as yet. And so that's on the menu here. Um, <clears throat> I actually uh, have another name for them that came to mind that's even more insulting and hilarious. The Cluster Club. Um, L. Ron Hubbard died in 86. And um, he was having difficulty with all the clusters that were pursuing him. 
he was being spiritually attacked by swarms of spiritual leftovers or external beings were attacking him. He, he spewed so much bullshit. Like, more than DJT, that's actually quite a pretty big mountain of a serving, ain't it? Uh, Aaron is much easier with the readiness to communicate. Um, I get a bit more blocked up. He's focused and coherent more than I. Or maybe it comes from practice, practice, practice. So I hope to improve in my communication with these tools. Okay. Um, golly, I'm going to wind this down soon to post, as in put it out in the world. Happy epiphany. I don't know what the words will be when they get around to marking the memorial of January 6th. But there'll be one. And I hope it's in decency. Decency. Not barbarity. Civilization. Not a mob. Golly. Um, it's a beautiful day. Oh, fresh snow in the mountains. I hadn't mentioned that before. But... It adds a note of invigoration to the day. Canadians sometimes enjoy a bit of a chill in the air. It's invigorating, vigor, the pulse. Um, my internal furnace is keeping me warm and I notice it on a chilly day. And so, Here's wishing you something a bit glorious, I guess. Epiphany, manifest. Also, it's <clears throat> like, you know, the 12 days of Christmas? It's either day 12 or day 13. And um, either way is sweet. And, um, Actually, that's an invitation to say, uh, I, I've become a bit of a Swifty over the last while. Um, a pretty slow Swifty, but Swifty nonetheless. And um, I found her video of All Too Well, and it's a catalog of experience to be revelatory and amazing. And I had thought that her short film, All Too Well, the short film, would have won an Oscar for short subject, 10 minutes. But it wasn't even nominated, and I don't know why. Um, and I appreciate her eloquence. She has a clarity of expression sometimes that's gorgeous. Uh, give me a sec. Well, so change my background. I take photos of lots of things. And this is 
a Christmas present from a gardener who keeps uh, spices and other things, foodstuffs in the garden. And these are bay leaves, laurel. And uh, let's see. How do I? Uh, um, so just let me put this, get me off screen a moment. So that's two branches of laurel. And it was a classic award from the community to an individual who had displayed exceptional skill or an admirable quality. And usually this is recalled in the context of the Olympics. Um, but they also had contests for playwriting, poetry, and many other things. In the Greek culture, aspired to bring out individual ability. And this is a way of acknowledging abilities achievement. And while she got person of the year from time, golly, she didn't get the Oscar uh, yet. So I'm proposing this as a piece of classical appreciation. And the Laurel Leaf, the Laurel Branches Award goes way back, 2,500 years, actually nearer maybe 3,000 years. It's a kind of glorious appreciation. Um, I'm bookish. I read, well, gosh, I read less than I used to. Um, I read more on screen now. But well, second stall, uh, gee, so, I read many things, including the classic. And one of my favorite classic authors is Plutarch. He wrote Parallel Lives, a Roman, a classic Roman, a classic Greek, how they were similar and how they were different. And it's actually a study of character. What is a character? Each of us individual have ourselves, but then we face the experiences of life, a whole bunch of testing, and a whole bunch of self-reliance and reliance on others, teamwork. All these things are all in play with each of us. But sometimes someone does something so amazing. It's got to be acknowledged and appreciated. And Taylor Swift inspires that response for more than just me. Um, filling out the flavor of this prize or award or appreciation, I'd like to suggest a role for the, uh, an acting storytelling role of a character of a person from Plutarch's life. And some folks think Plutarch's just a bunch of old white men. No, there's more to it than that. And 
the character that she, the person she reminds me of is Espazia, or shortened to Zia. And most folks have never heard of her, but She was Heracles' paramour. Heracles' paramour. And she was kind of a queen beside the throne. But Heracles didn't use a throne. And they couldn't marry. But they were partners. And <clears throat> Both Heracles and Socrates stated numerous times that Espasia was so eloquent that she taught them. They both expressed appreciation for her capacity to see, feel, think and do good. And just a suggestion, not a requirement, maybe an opportunity, I'd like if Taylor might consider portraying Espazia. And her story is so long and complicated that it'd have to be chopped down quite a bunch to fit into a movie. Maybe it's better fitted to a series, a longer mode of storytelling, because she interacted with numerous dozens of historical names, the names that we know, like Heracles and Socrates. Anyway, just kind of maybe closing out with a gift of an opportunity. And I don't want to go on and on and on. Um, I'll keep this on the shorter side, I guess. And another piece of the respect for A. A. Ron as an example to follow is that he puts out work on an almost daily basis. And while he respects his viewers um, by keeping things tight on the shorter side, he does have long form work. And uh, I go there sometimes, the longer form, but not often because the Cylons will steal all the time you got if you want, if you let them. Well, that doesn't quite phrase right. Um, but I keep a limit on how much time I spend with the Cylons because there's too many other things that are much more fascinating. A pleasure on getting acquainted. I hope, mm, reboot. Now it's showing one bar down. Uh, that's not gonna come back today. So, uh, but I'll likely run out of steam in home before nightfall. So, I got to figure out how to access the manual chair or to park this one someplace where I can eat, drink, go to the bathroom, live. It's like <clears throat> living with it, not just a short leash, but a choke chain. A choke chain short leash. I'm not having fun with that. 
But it's a backdrop for an opportunity to initiate communication with you. And that's something I'm thankful for. And so thank you for the time of listening. And you're welcome to, you know, do all that stuff and maybe even make a comment. Um, and I'm going to have to be, have to maintain this communication because the problem of mobility still exists. And until it's solved, I got to be able to ask for help. And so that's a part of what this is. So thank you for being gracious enough to listen. And I can't see the fresh snow in the mountains. Ah, oh, there's a bit. Yeah. Uh, and so happy present, happy winter, happy now. Epiphany. Look it up. Um, it might have ripples of meaning that may be useful to you. And that epiphany has been linked to insurrection and barbarity is an invitation to act in the service of well-being, sanity, and communication. And I got so much more to talk about, but, uh, oh, Taylor Swift has a song called Epiphany, and it's about Partly her grandfather fighting in World War II and getting across the beach. And it's also about medical care workers during COVID going past the point of exhaustion. In other words, there's a great deal of struggle involved in life, and a lot of people. Not that they're at the end of their rope, but they know that there's an end to the rope and that they're desperate to stay in, to get to the solution on the other side of the problem. And that may be a work of art as well. I'd like to say thanks gratitude, modesty, an appreciation of beauty. Actually, the three primary, well, three primary things, beauty, uh, things of value, beauty, truth, and love. And sometimes I like to give conscious attention to the exercise of those experiences. And um, so I'm going to wrap this up for now and uh, put it to bed. I got to learn how to edit. I got to learn. I got to learn a lot of things. The extent of my ignorance is so about. It bores me sometimes. But I've got this here. I'll get it up and then see if I can do another. Ah, that's the thread I was chasing. Aaron puts up work consistently, almost daily, short pieces and long pieces. He can put up three pieces in a day, a little snippet of this, a big dig into that. And he's uh, kind of engaging, bubbly, effervescent, um, Anyways, happy to meet you. Okay, be well for now.
Tchau.